Turn with me, please, to two openings this evening, Psalm 4 and Psalm 91. What have we been talking about for some weeks here now? We've been talking about perfect protection. Anybody interested in this? Psalm 4, are you there? The fourth song. In verse 8, Psalm 4, 8 says... I will both lay me down and toss and turn (laughs) and worry about the crime rate, huh? Our chemical weapons, our terrorist attacks. No. I'll do what? I will lay me down. Now, now, now get the word. I I will what? No, no, no. I will what? Both. Two things. I will both, number one, lay me down in peace. Number two, sleep like a baby. Why? How can he do that? With all the stuff going on in the world around about him. How can he do that? How can she do that? For you, Lord, only. It's only because of you. You make me dwell in safety. Dwell means live, stay, abide. I live in safety because of you. The in, today's English version says, when I lie down, I go to sleep in peace. You alone, O oh Lord, keep me perfectly safe. Everybody say that out loud. You alone, O oh Lord. Keep me perfectly safe. safe. Let's say it again together. You alone, O Lord, keep me perfectly safe. One more time. You alone, O Lord, keep me perfectly safe. Now, if some of this confession is new to you, you might say, well, why did you say it three more times? I heard you the first time. Uh, Are you sure? (laughs) It's not something bouncing off your eardrums or registering on your mind or being recorded in your memory that sets you free and keeps you in your life. It's got to get down in your spirit to where it's real to you and you believe it. And that's one of the best ways to get there is to keep saying it and hearing it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing, right? Not just hearing one time, hearing and hearing. By the word of the anointed one. If you look that up, it means the anointed one, the anointed word. So uh, you you need to say it again and and hear it again and say it again. How would you know if it's real to you and you really believe it? You get excited about it every time. If you hear it and you think, eh, ho-hum, I know that. I've been knowing that since I was a little child. No, you don't know it yet. It's just mental information, just something you've logged up here, but it's not real to you. You're not believing it. Just because you know something in your mind does not mean you're believing it with your heart. Not the same thing. That's why you need to keep hearing and hearing and hearing. In this, in this life, will we ever uh, get to the place where we don't need to hear some more word? No, no. And in fact, there are indications that we're going to continue hearing something after this life. Huh? If you were here, you know Brother Jesse talked about his experience, and he saw Paul still teaching. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. And, uh, you know, we, we should continue advancing and growing throughout eternity, and won't that be wonderful? Psalm 91, if you'd go there. We said to you from 2 Timothy 3, 1, that the New Testament says in the last days there would be perilous times, dangerous times. Uh, We have grown accustomed and even desensitized to violence and crime and atrocious things in the earth. That's not a good thing. We, We hear, you know, every day, 
on the news, the, the international news and national and local. We hear about crime. We hear about murder and rape and, and robberies and, and terrible things. And we hear, we've heard it so much until people think, well, that's just that's how it is. That's normal. That's not how it's supposed to be at all. One of these days, the Lord's going to come back. And there's going to be no more of that at all. No more. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the world to come, we won't need any jails or mental institutions or hospitals. Think about that. Didn't the Bible say there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more dying? Won't that be wonderful? So for us believers in Jesus that are born again and names in the Lamb's book of life, for us, this is as bad as it gets right now. <laughs> this is as rough, this, is, this life is as bad as it gets. For people who don't believe in Jesus, this is as good as it gets. It gets worse after this for them. They must say, well, I don't believe in hell. Well, you will. <laughs> hell is real, just as real as heaven. And uh, Jesus, thank God, has redeemed us. Amen. And you must be born again, he said. So simple, so easy, but you must believe on him and give your heart to him and let him be the Lord of your life. Amen. How many glad you have done that? Amen. Oh, thank God. Uh, we are not going to be able to believe that this world becomes a safe place in our lifetime. All of our praying, all of our confessions, all of our social reform is not going to make the world a safe place. The Lord has said in the last days, what? It's, it's going to be dangerous, perilous times. It's going to be evil people. But here's the question. We can't make all the world a safe place. There's going to be danger and peril around. But can God keep you yes. and me? Can he protect us in the midst of danger and peril all round about? Well, we here at the Faith Life family are completely convinced that he can and he will if we'll do our part. And so we're camping on this, and we're focusing on this, learning his part and learning our part. And this has turned out, I didn't really plan it this way, but it's turned out to be an exposition of Psalm 91. Yes. We're ta I didn't plan it that way, but that's how, it's, that's how it's working out. So we're looking, as we go through Psalm 91, we're seeing God's part, and we're seeing our part. Now, God's not going to do our part for us, and we can't do his part. But if we will do our part, can you count on him that he'll do what he said he would do? Yes, you, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You, you can stake your life on it and be safe. Let's read it. Psalm 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. I'll, I'll just read the rest of it to you from here. I will say of the Lord. Who does this? We saw this as our part. Our part. Does it make any difference? Oh, if you weren't here, we, we saw some scriptures where people had left God and no longer called him their God and no longer trusted in him. And when they got in trouble, he said, why don't you get your new gods to deliver you? He told them that. He said, go to them. Let them set you free. Well, it has happened in modern times. There are whole nations who've just rejected God out of hand. And we got people in this country that want God out of everything. Don't talk about him. Don't include him. You got to leave it. No, don't bring that religion in here. What they mean is don't bring God in here. We don't want God. And yet, if something happens, they want him to protect them. Oh, God, protect us. Well, that doesn't work. That's right. 
You can't say, God, we don't want you. We don't want your Bible. We don't want your word. We don't want to hear about that new birth. We don't want to hear about all that stuff, but protect us. And God bless America. Who? Who bless America? No. Wise people will say, God is my God, my fortress, my refuge, my defender, my protector, and I trust in him to protect me. So then what should happen when you get protected? Then you should give him the glory, right? We should give him the glory. And, uh, you know, thank God for our military Thank God for our men and women, our, our police, our, our National Guard, the technology, the weapons for our armies and defense. Thank God for all that. And, and we're going to talk about this perhaps later as we have time. You should prepare. You should do what you know to do. But in the end, hmm, if you're protected and you're saved, who should get the glory? Not your military. Not your might. Not your equipment. Not who's in office. Have you noticed that when things go good, everybody politically wants to take credit for it? Right? And if things go bad, what do they want to do? <laughs> Nobody wants to claim it, and they want to blame it on the other party. And there's, there's a lot of dishonesty that's going on in these areas, and it's a bad thing. We, we've grown accustomed to it, and we laugh about politics, but it's a bad thing. I said it's a bad thing. No, when something goes good, we shouldn't try to give the credit to this party or that party or this people or to ourselves because we're such strong Americans, and we're this, and we're that, or we're the other. Hey, without the grace and the protection of God, we wouldn't have lasted this long. There's so many times, uh, we, we don't know how many times we've been this close. I've talked to some people that are in the no circles, and there have been some things happened in past decades that a lot of people don't even know about. We were this close. I mean to all out nuclear destruction. I'm talking about closer than that. And most people never even knew about it. And they're thing after thing after thing, especially since the attacks of 9-11. How many just know in your heart? I mean, we know about some things in the media, but how many just know in your heart? We have been spared attack after attack and problem after problem. Thank God for our people that are working, our intelligence and our homeland security. Thank God. Pray for them. Respect them. But don't give them the credit. Don't give them the glory. I don't have everybody with me on this, I guess. Unless you want to lose it. Hmm? Because there, there is a pull there and a temptation for people to go, yeah, we're smart, we're strong, we're this. That's why that we haven't been taken down. No, it's the grace of God. It's the mercy of God. It's the goodness of God. And all of us ought to be saying, you know, in God we trust. One nation. Under God. Right? We, sh we should be saying it and believing it. And every time something happens, we don't holler who gets to take credit, Democrat or Republican. No, God. God. God gets the credit. He protected us. Thank God for the people that were involved. But God did it. He gets the glory. And that's what he said to, right off the bat in Psalm 91. I will say. Not just thinking. I'll what? I will say of the Lord what? The Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my fortress. He's my God. In him will I trust. You say it out loud. You're not ashamed. You're not embarrassed. And friend, do this on a regular basis in life. Anything tries to scare you, tries to shake you, tries to put fear in you, it's when it's time for you to stand up and start talking. Right? And say, I trust in God. He will protect me. God is my refuge. I mean, you need to start talking. You need to start saying it out loud of your mouth. God will protect our family. He will keep us. He will spare us. He will look over us. Right? God is our God. He's the God of this family. He's the God of this church. 
Would God, everybody would say, he's the God of this nation. Yes. Right? Yes. We trust in him. He keeps us. He protects us. Because if you trust in something else, then when it comes up, he's liable to say, well, go to that. That's what you picked. Let that protect you, and it won't be enough. Oh, but the Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth, is more than enough. Always. That's our part. Verse 3, surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. That's his part. And what did he say about it? Surely he would do it. He will deliver us from it, from the traps and from the plagues and, and, and things that spread. Verse 4, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Now, if you're standing up and you're believing it and you're saying it, you're not ashamed and you give him all the glory and you claim him as your protector, what did he tell you he would do? He'll deliver you, right? And he will cover you. Now, if you weren't here, we went into some detail in the scripture. We saw there is a canopy of protection. He uses this illustration more than once of a mother hen that covers over her little chicks and protects them. God does that to his people with his power. Oh, hallelujah. Long before Star Trek, God had force fields. <laughs> he does. I mean, you read about it in the, in the uh, Exodus where that the plagues swept through the land of Egypt and they came up to the, uh, the border of the land of Goshen. It'd be just like the Arkansas-Missouri state line. There's nothing you can know, know why, how it was there except for a sign that told you. And, and, and these diseases, these plagues would come up and, and hit something. They would hit something at the border of the land of Goshen and couldn't affect God's people. There was one time it was pitch dark on one side and the sun shining on the other. Now, how does that happen? <laughs> I'd be like driving to the Arkansas, Missouri state line. And it's pitch dark over there and bright light. God has canopy of protection, a, a force that he can put around you. Right? That can keep you in the midst of the most dangerous and perilous situations. That's why a little bit later on he says a thousand may fall on this side and 10,000 on this side, but it won't touch me. How could that be? If it's killing thousands all around you and you don't die, how can that be? There must be something. There must be something around you, protecting you, that the disease or the danger can't get through. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Do you believe this? That's his part. He said, surely he will deliver you. Verse 4, he will cover you. So we talked about our part. We talked about his part. Verse 5, here comes our part again. You shall not be afraid. Somebody say, not afraid. Not afraid. I mean, if, if we had time, the Lord let us so. Have you studied it out? You know, we, we camped on this for months, what, a couple of years ago? Free from all fears. Do we have to be afraid ever? No, you, you may feel afraid. You may be tempted. You can have the hair standing up on the back of your neck. You can have goosebumps double parked on your arms. You can have your knees bumping together, and you still don't have to be afraid. Amen. So it's too late. I'm already afraid. No, no. You feel afraid. But you don't have to yield to the fear. You can resist it with all those feelings and symptoms. You can say, no, I resist fear in the name of Jesus. I refuse to be afraid. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will fear nothing. Why? He's with me. His protection is around me. His power is with me. I will not be afraid. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid of man. I'm not afraid of disease. 
Oh, we got to get this built into our children, friends. We got to, because everything around about us is trying to put fear in us. And the devil tries to put fear in your children from the time they're born. And you. So you constantly have to feed yourself along this line and tell yourself, I refuse to fear. I fear nothing. I reverence God. And I, I don't fear man. I don't fear devil. I don't fear disease. I have, I have no fear. Fearless. Now you need to get that built into you. And if you think you're not there, we'll get you some good materials. Get these materials. They're free. You can download them off the internet. Free. You can go back there and pick them up free. And the title of it is Free <laughs> from All Fears. <laughs> right? <laughs> we believe in free around here. Freely we've received. Freely we give. So, uh, you shall not be afraid. That's our part. We camped on that. You won't be afraid of the terror by night, the arrow that flies by day, the pestilence that walks in the darkness, the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand will fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Did you hear that? Yeah. It shall not come. Am I reading the Bible here, friends? Yeah. It shall not come Hallelujah. near you. Now, you've got to back up, though. Got to back up. If what? Number one, if you claim God as your God and as your protector and you trust him to protect you, right? And number two, what? You do not fear. You see, a lot of times people don't want to skip that. They don't want to read that. No, no, you got to do what he told you to do. Then you can count on him to do what he said he would do. Said out loud, God is my God. And I am not afraid. If that's so, then this applies to you. It won't come near you. Only with your eyes will you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because, now see here it's restated, isn't it? Verse 9. Because why? See, reference back to verse 1 and 2. Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation. He He's my God. He's pro my protector. I live in him. I stay in him underneath the everlasting arms and the cover of his feathers. The canopy of protection. I live under it. You need to believe that. You need to see it and you need to say it. Of course, that'll help push all the fear out of you too, won't it? Because of that, verse 9, verse 10, there shall what? Oh, man, if this don't do something for you. There shall what? No. Not much evil. No. Huh? No. Not too many bad things. No, no. No. N-O. No. no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. Do you believe it? Yes. Of, course, of course, now he's, he's, he's repeated the thought. He said, if you'll do this. And if you won't be afraid. Then he said, because you have done this. Right? right? Then no evil will befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. Glory to, Glory to God. Then what? What else did we find out that God does? For, verse, verse 11, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways when you go out, when you come in, when you lay down, when you get up, hmm? go to work, when you come home, all your ways. God command, commands and gives charge to angels to protect you and to keep you. Verse 12, they shall bear you up in their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. Amen. Is it true? Yes. Is this real? Yes. Are angels real? Yes. Yeah, they are. Now, they're not flesh and blood like you and me. They're spirit. He's made his, his angels ministering spirits. Spirits of fire. But they're very, very real. If you were here last week, we talked about it. 
uh, they can manifest in human form to the point you wouldn't know the difference. You just think you're seeing a human. But they're, but they're an angel. Hmm? Yes, Is it true? Yes, the Bible said be uh, careful to entertain strangers. Yes, For some have entertained angels unawares. What does unawares mean? They didn't know that they spent the last two hours with an angel. They thought it was a man. Right? They thought it was a human. So we see that. And we, we can these angels manifest and do things in the natural world? We saw when the people of God were in trouble. When they were outnumbered terribly by an opposing enemy force. And they cried out to God and they put their trust in God. That God told them that that enemy king and his troops will not set one foot in this city. They won't even fire one arrow in this deal. Well now how in the world could that ever be? And the Bible said that night an angel, A-N, an angel, apparently one, went through the enemy troops and slew 185,000 of their troops. Wow. <laughs> and they, when the rest of them woke up, there are all these dead corpses all over. And they got up and went home. Well, I reckon so. It's time to go home. <laughs> Should have went home before this. But what did he do that? He did that to protect his people. Do we have angels today? Yes. We went and read where the Lord said, talking about a, a child, said their angel, talking about the child's angel, does always behold the face of my father. Yes. And we asked the question, why would you lose your angel? Because you grew up. Hmm? A lot of folk need them more now than they did when they were little. And we have every reason to believe that we have angels assigned to us and given charge concerning us to protect us and to keep us, to even grab us in their hands and lift us up Amen. lest we hit our foot against a rock. Amen. Now that doesn't mean you do dumb stuff. Someone says, well, I got angels, so I'm just going to step out here from this truck and prove it. Watch him grab me before I get mushed. No, you're probably about to get mushed. Because that's exactly, precisely what the enemy tried to do, right? To tempt Jesus. Remember that? Quoted this scripture to him, said, took him up on the pinnacle of the temple, said, throw yourself off of here. Why? Because it's written. The devil quotes scriptures. He said, it's written. He'll give his angels charge over you. They'll bear you up in your hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. So in other words, prove it. Jump off and show everybody that the Bible is true. Jump off and, and, and show everybody that the angels will swoop in and catch you before you hit the ground. And what did Jesus say? Well, just stand back and I'll show you. <laughs> huh? Just watch this. I'll prove it to all of y'all. Anytime you hear that kind of language, you know somebody's wrong. Well, I'm going to prove to my family that the word is true. God didn't call you to do that. Hmm? I'm going to prove to everybody on the job that this is real. I'm going to show them all. No, you're getting off now. <laughs> I said, you're getting off. God didn't call you. That, that's like an ant standing in front of a tank. Said, I'm going to protect this tank. God does not need you to defend him. Are you listening? Or prove that he is real and true. He is experiencing no uh, identity crisis. Do you understand that if the Lord so chose... He could prove to every person on the planet that he is real oh, yes. and that he is God. Yes. He could do it in a moment, yes. couldn't he? Yes. 
He could shake this planet. He could manifest himself until there wouldn't be anybody on the planet. I don't care what religion they thought they were. Right? Everybody on the planet would be nose in the floor hollering, the Lord, he is God. He could do it in a moment. And Mrs. says, why doesn't he? He doesn't want to. He has chosen not to. One verse says he's a God who hides himself in that regard. Why? Because if he did, there'd be no faith involved in it. And he has ordained that people are selected as his or not his by their willingness to believe on him now in this short life when they can't see him or feel him. It's a by faith proposition and if they will do that, if a man or woman will believe on him and live for him, even though they don't see him and feel him, then they qualify. I said they qualify to be a part of his eternal kingdom. Amen. And I don't really fully know why I said all that, but uh, it's true, isn't it? Where are you holding your place? You still at Psalm 91? Huh? Well, we were talking about angels. You remember that? And the reason we got into that, you remember, is because we're saying, are you supposed to prove? To other people that God is real. That faith is real. No, God could do it very easily if he so chose. And you, he, you don't need to feel like you need to defend him. He doesn't need defending. What you're called to do is believe it yourself. Right? And obey it yourself. And set an example of faith and obedience. Hmm? And get off of this quest that you're going to straighten everybody out. God doesn't have any Holy Ghost policemen. Hmm? That you're, now, now listen, seriously. There, there's a number of people that feel like it's their job to judge everybody's doctrine and point out where they're wrong in every area. Did you hear me? And it's not right. And they're going to prove to everybody this and straighten everybody out. No, no. Believe it yourself. Live it yourself. Have fruit yourself. Year after year. And if you do, even people slow to believe eventually will go, hey, there must be something to this. Right? Watching you and seeing you being a witness, a living light. Can you say amen? amen? Well, he said that he would give his angels charge over us. We talked about this. Let me... Uh, mention a few of these to you. Don't try to turn to these openings. But let me mention a few examples of this. The Bible said in Genesis 19, you don't even have to turn there, just listen. In Genesis 19, when Sodom and Gomorrah was about to be destroyed, the Bible said the angels, you know, came and they told Lot to get out of there with his family. At verse 16, while he lingered, the men laid hold on his hand and on the hand of his wife and the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him without the city. These, it was so close to them being destroyed, these angels grabbed hold of them. Next thing they know, they're outside the city. Amen. Angels Amen. protected them. You remember that? The Bible said in Isaiah 63, 9, the angel of his presence saved them. Talking about the people of God. In his love and his pity, he redeemed them and bore them and carried them all the days of old. Do you remember in the book of Daniel? Huh? God, you see the angels of the Lord in deliverance. Do you remember? When uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fiery furnace? The king said in Daniel 3.28, he said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him. Yes. Oh, did you hear this? Yes. See, why did some other people just get burnt to a crisp and these guys get delivered on this day? They trusted in God to protect them. Yes. Now, you have to say the whole sentence. 
Because people, well, I trust in God. No, trusted in God to protect them. Well, I trust in God, but it's just whatever he decides. <laughs> that don't cut it. That's being faithless. Well, I'm just leaving it up to him where you think you are. But he told you what to do. Didn't he? If you would say, he's my God. He's my refuge. He's my fortress. He's my protector. And I trust him. What? To do what? What you just got through saying? To protect me. And you know, they were bold to say it. They said, no, we won't bow down. And our God whom we serve will deliver us. Right? Now, I've heard people try to teach it and say, well, yeah, but they said, but if not, no, we won't. No, if not means if you don't throw us in, we still won't do it. That doesn't work to say if you throw us in, he'll deliver us, but if he don't. That doesn't work. There's no faith there. You don't know the will of God. Study it out. Look at it closer. He said, they're saying, if you, because he told them, I'm going to throw you in. If, you, if you'll bow down, I won't throw you in. They're saying, no, if you throw us in, our God whom we serve will deliver us. He's able to deliver us and he will do. Man, that's bold talk. They're telling you they're going to kill you. Because the king had said, who is that God can deliver you out of my hand, out of that terrible fire furnace? They said, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us, and he will deliver us. Here it says they trusted in him. It's obvious from what they said. You say, you, you won't throw us in if we, do, if we will bow down. Well, if you don't throw us in, we're not going to bow down. That's what made him so mad. He immediately threw them in. <laughs> but he said, they, he said he saw a fourth man in there. I thought we, thought we threw three in there. Three. One, two, three, four. Three. How many you throw in? Three. No, one, two, three, four. Somebody else is in there. <laughs> There's somebody else in there. Oh, and, and, and tell me what happened to them, how they came out. No burn. The men that threw them in died from the heat. No burns. No singed hair or eyebrows. Not even the smell of smoke on their clothes. There must have been that canopy. There must have been, right? There had to be that bubble of protection around them. That's how else can you explain it? And that angel, the angel of the Lord, was there affecting it. How did he do it? I don't know. Don't have to know. <laughs> Just believe in it. And expect that if I ever need something like that, it'll be there for me too. How about you? Say it out loud. If I ever need something like that, it'll be there for me. We've already had numerous testimonies of people that had car wrecks or equipment problems and, and should have been destroyed, but they weren't, walked away. Something was protecting them. Hallelujah. And you know, when Daniel wouldn't quit praying, remember that? When Daniel wouldn't quit praying, they said, we're going to throw you in the lion's den. Just quit praying. He said, I can't quit praying. <laughs> I believe in God. I serve God. Yeah. And so they threw him in the lion's den, which was usually the end of anybody. They had never thrown anybody in there and that not been the end of them. Because they keep these lions hungry on purpose. Amen. Hmm? And when they would open the door, all the lions would run to the middle and go, supper. <laughs> right? They're all hungry. And lions can get really testy when they're hungry for too long. And so they threw him in there, and the king couldn't sleep all night because he liked Daniel. And he came out early the next morning, and he cried out, Oh, Daniel. <laughs> His heads tell him, Ain't nobody going to answer. <laughs> Oh, Daniel, was your God whom you serve and pray to continually, was he able to, to save you? 
and he hears a voice. <laughs> and Daniel says, yep, I'm still here. <laughs> Don't you know he shouted? He's like, glory to God, this has to be God. This has never happened before. And Daniel says, my God has sent his angel. Does God use angels to protect us? He sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths, and they have not hurt me. Glory to God. Well, I reckon if, if the angel came and shut the lion's mouth, it must have needed to be shut. I suspect the, the lion had other ideas. Don't you think so? I think they were ready to chomp on them immediately, chomp on Daniel. But before Daniel could fall to the bottom of the pit, this big angel swept in and got that line around the head and clamped his mouth. Said, no, nah, kitty, you ain't eating today. <laughs> and this line's going, hmm, 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 hmm. And finally gave up. Because the angel held their mouths together. Is that what it said? Shut, the, the Lord has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth. He held it together. Can God hold something off of you today? Can his angels hold something back from you and off of you? Yes, yes, yes. Glory to God. You know the story. After that, made the king mad because these people had tricked him into throwing Daniel in, so he ordered, throw them in. Let's see how they come out. Well, I reckon when Daniel come out, his angels come out with him because there wasn't nobody holding the lion's mouth when they got in, and the Bible said the lions jumped, got a hold of them before they hit the bottom, tore them apart. They wanted to do that to Daniel. But the angels held their, shut their mouths. Do you believe this? Yes. Is this real? Yes. Thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto God. Go to Acts, please. I'm, I'm not done. <laughs> Acts 5. Said out loud, the Lord... Had given, has given his angels, given his angels. Charge, concerning me. charge concerning me. They protect me. They keep me. They'll lift me up in their hands before I get hurt. You believe it? You need to believe what the Bible says and expect it. Acts 5 Well, let me just read it. You go to Acts 12. We, we don't have time to look at all of these. But Acts 12, and I'll just read to you Acts 5. You know, in, in Acts 5, they had put the disciples in prison. Yes. Hmm? And, uh, uh, but they came to find them, and they were gone. And they said, the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors. And brought them forth. Isn't that something? And told them, go to the temple and preach. Now normally, you got thrown in jail for preaching. And you get a chance to get out and get away. You're thinking, man, I'm, I'm blowing this popsicle stand. I'm out of here. But they, they, they got them out and they said, now you go straight to the temple and preach and tell the people all the words of this life. Who got them out of jail? Angels of the Lord. This is a real jail. Real cell, steel bars. Can an angel affect physical things? Hmm? That lion was real. Hmm? I don't know if Daniel saw that angel or not, but he saw that, that lion all night doing this. Mm -hmm. trying to open his mouth, trying to get whatever was on him off, and he couldn't. Something was holding his mouth shut. Amen. And here this angel was able to open a physical door. Now the 12th chapter of Acts, you see a similar thing. 
Acts 12. Are you there? The Bible said in Acts 12 that the uh, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain in the church. He killed James the brother of John with the sword. He saw it please the Jews and he proceeded to take Peter. So they got they arrested Peter. They put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. I mean, this is heavy guard. Intending to bring him out to the people. They're going to execute him too. So Peter was kept in the prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church to God for him. And so Herod was going to bring him forth that, that the morning and that night before Peter was what? Huh? Now let's just stop right here. Is he doing his part of Psalm 91? It's obvious the man is not afraid of dying. He's not afraid of Herod. He's not afraid of the executioner. He's not afraid of the morning. Why? He knows he's saved. Right? He's not afraid to die anyhow. Names in the Lamb's Book of Life, they're working on his mansion. He's wanting to see it anyway. Right? He's not afraid to die. But not only that, God is his God, his refuge, his protection, and he is not afraid. Sleeping. Not just taking a little nap. The man is sleeping. Seriously sleeping. Deep sleep. Right? You can tell because verse 7, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shine in the prison and he smote Peter. <laughs> he hit him or kicked him, I don't know, but it didn't say he tapped him. <laughs> smote him. Why? Peter's snoozing, man. He is not concerned about this deal. He's prayed about it. He knows the church is praying. He's cast his cares over on the Lord, and he is sleeping. Faith sleeps. Faith sleeps soundly the evening before your planned execution. Now, fear can't do that, but faith can. Oh, can you see this? He smote Peter and raised, he said, get up, boy, get up quick. And when he did, his chains fell off from his hands. They just fell off. Angels have some pretty neat tricks. Hmm? They can do some stuff. You have at least one assigned to you, probably more. Do you believe it or not? Can they do stuff? Can they get a hold of stuff that's trying to hurt you and, and hold it back? Can, can they loosen you from things that's binding you and holding you down? Can they even pick you up and clear you? Lest you get hurt. Chains fell off from his hands. The angel said to him, uh, put your clothes on. Now put on your shoes. He's having him talking through this. Because he, he, he's real sleepy probably. He's going... See, the Bible said he thought he was dreaming all this anyway. He thought, hi, who are you? This is a neat dream, man. Put your clothes on. Oh, okay. Don't forget your shoes, Peter. Put your shoes on. This is, this is, this is the angel talking. Oh, yeah. That shoe, too. No, it's not tied. Tie both of them. Okay, where's your coat? It's right there. Pick it up. Get up. Now follow me. Come on, quit dragging around. Come quick, follow me. We're breaking out of jail. Come on. <laughs> he thought he was dreaming, didn't he? But is it real? Is this angel real? He walked in and the place lights up. He says, get up. And the chains and shackles fall off of his, his wrists and his, his ankles. He said, follow me. Put on your clothes. He did. 
Put your garment around. Put your coat on. Follow me. He went out and followed him and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel. He thought he was seeing a vision. When they were past the first and the second ward, these are the soldiers guarding him. <laughs> they just walked right by him. They came to the iron gate that leads to the city and opened to them of his own accord. Now, this is way before electric gate openers. <laughs> this is before electricity. Huh? <laughs> they just are walking towards it and... <laughs> no wonder Peter thought he was seeing a vision. He never saw this before, ever. A right. gate open by itself? Never. And he walked out, and he's following him. They passed through one street, and uh, forthwith the angel departed from him. He was gone. And Peter came to himself. He said, now I know of a surety. The Lord has what? Sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the, the people of the Jews. And he went, you know, to the church where they're praying, and they all... It, Excited to spend some time together. And he left. Herod couldn't find him the next day. He is gone. This is New Testament. Isn't it? Are we living in the same new covenant as Peter? Can the same kind of things happen for you as happened for Peter? But would you see one reason why uh, some people's angels have been hindered? Because would they have been sleeping like that in faith? No, they'd be scared, 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 crying and acting pitiful and feeling sorry for themselves. and what do I do to deserve this? That's not doing your part. Did you hear me? And that's one reason why some people's angels have been hindered from doing things for them. Faith is a must. Faith is required. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Does that excite you at all? I want to talk about one more thing. In Matthew 28. Matthew 28. I want you to have this in your thinking. And be looking at it for the next time. We're, we're talking about the protection of God. And among other things, we talk, we're talking about how he protects you. He protects you with his power, his covering canopy, wings of protection. There's a power there. He delivers you. He uses his angels to protect you as well. And here's something that goes along with this. In Matthew 28. The Bible said when Jesus was raised from the dead, angels were involved, weren't they? And notice this, 28, Matthew 28, 1, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake for, so this was associated with the earthquake, the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Well, <laughs> this angel comes ripping through the atmosphere and there's an earthquake and rolled back this stone that would have taken, I don't know how many men to move, he just rolls it back and sits on it. And he's sitting there. <laughs> His countenance was like lightning. Anybody ever seen lightning? You ever seen anybody's clothes and their countenance that looked like lightning? You might have seen some, as in Branson, you might see some flashy things. <laughs> but you ain't never seen this. His raiment was white as snow. Now get this. And for fear of him, 
The keepers did shake and became as dead men. They shook and they fell out and just from a distance, you'd think they're all dead. They weren't dead. And this happened from what? From being in the presence of this angel. He came ripping out of heaven through the atmosphere and the earth shook and, and that huge stone rolled back and he's propped down himself and sat on it and they grabbed their hearts <laughs> and shook and fell out like dead people and just laid there like a stone. Yes. This is something God uses to protect you and me. It is the fear of the Lord. And next time, unless the Lord tells us something different, I'll take you through scriptures. We'll look at how he does it. But angels don't have to lift a hand to protect you. In all, not in all situations. Their situation, well, all they have to do is manifest. And people that were thinking about hurting you get scared. And change their mind. And decide to go on down the road. I'm going to show you scripture after scripture where this has happened. Unless the Lord leads us differently. But to try to paint a picture. It, the Bible says more than once. The fear of the Lord fell on them. And they trembled. And they cried. And they ran away. And they didn't hurt God's people. And then maybe some, the enemy is trying to stir up some no-gooder to break in your house, to hurt you, to attack you, to carjack you, and they're all primed to do it. They've already selected you and picked you out. And your big angel comes and rests on their shoulder and goes, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> they may not see anything, they may not hear anything, but all at once this presence comes over them and they start shaking. And they, th they tell the other guys, uh, 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 let's just not do this right now. Let's just, no, no, let's just go. We'll, we'll do something else. And the fear of God comes on them. And they change their mind about you. And they leave. And they don't do it. This has already happened Times we didn't even know it. That's right. That's things that didn't happen. Yeah. How did you know about the things that didn't happen? <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. But this is one of the things God uses, and it's one of the ways he uses your and my angels. These, these beings, that's why he has to tell us, don't worship them. They are so powerful and so mighty and so awesome Daniel said the same thing happened to him. You remember that? Reading the book of Daniel, this angel was sent from the presence of the Lord and when he came and spoke to him, the Bible said, Daniel said he fell at his feet and all his strength ran out of him and he was like a dead man laying there on the ground. And the angel had to touch him and strengthen him for him to even be able to talk to him. You remember that? These are awesome creatures, created beings. And you got at least one of them assigned to you, night and day, looking after you. He's been told by the Lord to make sure you are kept and safe, and he's out to do his job. <laughs> Glory to God. That's what Jesus said hanging on the cross in the darkest moment. You remember that? Excuse me, prior to that, when he was attacked. And he told him to put up the sword. You remember that? What did he say? He, he said, put your weapons up. Don't you know I could ask the Father right now? And he'd give me what? He'd give me a bunch of angels. Right? And there wouldn't have been any way that anybody could have made him do anything. Right? But if he'd have done that, and he knew he could, which makes him all the more the hero. 
He knew he could have done it any time. He could have just asked for him and been delivered just like that. He could have done it any time from then to when he died on the cross. He could have done it at the whipping post. He could have done it on the cross. But if he had a, we'd be lost. Thank God he did. So we can be delivered. So we can have angels. So we can call. Huh? And a lot of times if something's happening, you can just cry out and say, Lord, protect me. Keep me. Help me. It's the same thing as you calling for that help. Amen? Amen. And they're there and they're ready. If you'll believe and trust and not fear, and you can be kept and I can be kept in this dangerous, perilous place until we run our race, finish our course, and get out of here. Can you say amen? Stand on your feet.